say happy Friday Eve to you. I'm Frank Wiley, an anchor with 10 Tampa Bay's Bright Side. Of course, we're hanging out. We're doing it virtually for obvious reasons because of this pandemic. But we're still going to talk about some amazing things this morning. So I want to welcome you to this uh, special United Way Suncoast presentation. So guess what? For the next few minutes or so, we're inviting you to learn more about what the United Way Suncoast does and what it plans to do, right? As we look ahead, what we're, what we're going to do next. I don't know if you knew this, but guess what? Studies show that when you understand the nonprofit's mission, you are nine times more likely to give, to participate. And that's what we want you to do. So United Way Suncoast mission will be uh, shaped by its strategic vision. It's kind of a GPS letting us know where we're going and where we've been for that matter. And we're going to talk about our leaders and everyone who's dedicated to this strategic corporate and community partnership that we have. And today you'll get a chance to hear from UWS CEO Jessica Muroff as she talks with key stakeholders out there and team leaders. You'll also get a snapshot of how the organization is changing the direction of people's lives across the region, across the Bay Area, and learn more about what you can do. Right. We want to know what you can do to help and you want to know how you can help. So we're going to tell you and throughout this presentation, you're going to hear about Alice families. You might be wondering, what is Alice? Who is Alice? Alice is actually an acronym for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. Now, these are parents and children who work hard but still struggle with the cost of living, struggle with keeping their heads above water. United Way, Suncoast calls these community members our families. That's all part of the mission. So go ahead and stay with us through the uh, program because we've got a lot of great information to get to. Jessica is going to close with some special remarks about how diversity, equity, and inclusion, as you well know, are fused into all that the United Way, Suncoast does as we move forward. We've been doing it for 97 years now. We're going to strengthen that effort and continue to do some of the things what we've done in the past. But before we begin, I'd like to let you know about an upcoming special event. It's going to take place at the end of the month, specifically on Zoom. That's how we do things these days. September 29th, that's going to be from 8.30 until 9.30 in the morning. Again, September 29th from 8.30 until 9.30 for a, a panel presentation called The Future of Philanthropy. Maximizing Mackenzie Scott's Generosity. The, the presentation will feature local organizations discussing the transformational gifts they received from Scott, one of the nation's leading philanthropists. And at this point, we want to get you started with some opening words from UWS board chair, Brian Deming, who will illuminate what we do and what's going into this strategic vision that we have going on here. Good morning to you, Brian. As I welcome everyone to this special presentation, I will say that one thing will become abundantly clear. At United Way Suncoast, we do a lot, and I mean a lot. We constantly energize and focus our efforts to help Alice families, those hardworking parents and children who often are just one unexpected expense away from dire financial challenges. I think almost everyone knows that we do this in part by funding the great work of many community partners. In the last 12 months alone, we've infused our strategic community partners with more than $11 million in grant funding. And in 2020, at the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we rallied the community and raised an additional $1.6 million in emergency funding for immediate needs. But we also support the community through our own successful programs and initiatives like volunteer income tax assistance, Reading All Stars, Campaign for Grade Level Reading, and Operation Graduate which all underscore our three focus areas of early learning, youth success, and financial stability. And our resource centers and reading rooms dot the landscape and help us bring needed services directly into the community. In short, we lead, we convene, and we partner to create lasting impact in DeSoto, Hillsboro, Manatee, Pinellas, and Sarasota counties. But we're not resting on our laurels. Effective organizations take time to reflect and assess every three to five years as to where they've been, where they are and where they want to go. At United Way Suncoast, that cadence meant that we've always planned for 2020 to be the year to craft a new updated strategic plan. Of course, no one anticipated the transformative headwind of a global pandemic. But out of crisis arises opportunity. We called upon the organization's focus and agility, and with the help of an engaged board and the leadership of our CEO, Jessica Muroff, we embarked on a diverse nine-month effort to create a new path forward. 
And this path forward is not merely a United Way plan, it's a community plan informed by input from a broad and diverse group of community leaders and voices. As we surveyed community members, conducted focus groups, and scoured the nation for promising practices, we operated with a greater sense of urgency because in the wake of this pandemic, our work has never been more important. Now we have the roadmap to enhance and elevate our efforts. In the next few minutes, you'll learn more about how we're going to lift up and deepen our community role, engage volunteers and donors as partners in caring, and infuse diversity, equity, and inclusion in everything we do. Today, we stand at the crossroads of one of the most pivotal periods in the organization's 97-year history. But thanks to our strategic vision, we're poised not only to continue our successful support of our five county region, but to empower more community members and give them the freedom to rise. Thanks to Brian for that mission right there, an amazing message. And he says, we are not resting on our laurels as we move forward. Many of you out there know the United Way Suncoast gives support to other organizations, but it is important to keep this in mind, to understand that it also invests time and energy into its own initiatives that boost the lives of community members. So to tell you more about this, who better than the CEO, Jessica Miroff with UWS Chief Impact Officers, Brownwin uh, Baytal, my apologies, Brownwin Baytal and uh, Emery Ivory. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Thank you, Frank. I am super excited because I am now joined by our chief impact officers, Emery and Bronwyn, two of my favorite humans on this planet. Um, Emery provides regional leadership for our northern counties, and Bronwyn Baytal provides regional leadership for our southern counties. And as we noted, um, the strategic vision calls for us to elevate our work in United Way and what we do every day. But I also think it's so important for you to understand exactly what we do to help and support our Alice families and our community members. And so Bronwyn, I'm gonna start with you. Let's talk about the work that we're doing in Manatee, Sarasota and DeSoto. Wonderful, thank you, Jessica. You know, that's one of my favorite topics. Um, so early learning and grade level reading are among the highest priorities in Manatee, Sarasota and DeSoto. Through the strength of our collaborations, we multiply our impact to create powerful, transformational, generational outcomes. It's a lot to say. We're grateful for our strategic community partners in this work. And in Manatee County, we're concentrating on The Big Plan, a collaborative effort that aims to double the number of third graders reading on grade level by 2026 at 10 key elementary schools. We also have two reading rooms community in community supported housing to ensure that families have equitable access to early learning where they live. We also have a foundational approach that provides United for Literacy kits to community focused organizations and neighborhood books, small book nooks established and run in neighborhood small businesses. We lead the Suncoast campaign for grade level reading in Manatee and DeSoto counties and are a partner in Sarasota which brings together multiple partners to ensure that all of our children are reading on grade level by the time they leave third grade. That pivotal transformation when a child goes from learning to read to reading to learn. Last year in Sarasota, Manatee and DeSoto, we launched the Quality Child Care Initiative in nine locations where we team with early learning coalitions to support selected child care centers. We're striving to raise the number of children ready for kindergarten and increase the quality of early education. Children who arrive to school ready to learn are four times more likely to graduate, so the stakes are high. We recognize that our entire community ecosystem relies on a foundation of reading, and that's why we also concentrate on financial stability, including creating access for our parents and caregivers of our young readers. We also continue to create pathways for Alice families through our volunteer income tax assistance, which save community members hundreds of thousands of dollars, brought tax return dollars back to the area and assisted families in securing the much needed child tax credit. But to talk more about that, I'd like to turn the conversation over to my amazing colleague, Emery Ivory. Great, thanks Bronwyn. Um, so the emphasis on early learning and reading also represents a key focus in Hillsborough and Pinellas County as well. And so here we are proud to have trained volunteers 
reading to children in our Reading All Stars program. And we continue to provide leadership for the Campaign for Grade Level Reading in Hillsborough County. We operate three resource centers in the neighborhoods of Sulphur Springs, Campbell Park, and North Greenwood. And here we work with several partners on an initiative called Operation Graduate. And this helps put students on the path to college and other careers. Also from the Resource Center, uh, we provide support to community members, including financial stability services, uh, employment assistance, legal services, and access to computers. And more recently, we've collaborated with partners to launch a certified nursing assistant and phlebotomy training program. And similar to efforts in Manatee and Sarasota, we continue to support families through our VITA program. And we also have financial stability services for the entire region, uh, including Bank on Suncoast, which helps residents who are unbanked or underbanked, uh, and the Savings uh, for Stability Transportation Initiative, which is a matched savings program designed to help families purchase costs. Wow, Emory and Bronwyn, I mean, I, it just it just speaks to the breadth and depth of, of work that we do and how we're touching the lives of community members in so many different ways and showing that our own work ranks with the support that we give and in partnership with our strategic community partners. I do want to take a moment to thank all of our team members at United Way Suncoast who help us succeed. Um, they are a passionate and dedicated group of team members who embrace our goals, contribute to our vision and support us. They understand our direction and where we're heading and they are aligned with our strategies and it goes without saying and we see it every day. They are so committed um, to our success and supporting our community. So in closing, I want to ask um, Emory and Bronwyn, how do you see our strategic vision helping move us forward? Emory, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited about our uh, strategic plan and really believe that our strategic vision is going to help us build on the success of our neighborhood centers, uh, providing more families with the support needed to find jobs and reach their financial goals. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to help more families facing eviction uh, and expanding successful youth programs like Operation Graduate. Uh, we'll be able to increase our efforts to provide needed support to areas such as Seminole Heights, Waimama, and the University District. Uh, and last, we'll work even harder to make sure that all children have the tools that they need to enter school ready to learn. Bronwyn? Emory just did a, an amazing job. So I'll cap it off by saying that we um, will continue to deepen our partnerships with our strategic community partners who help inform all of the work that we do, no matter what it looks like. We'll deepen our early learning focus, ensure greater support to teachers and children by expanding our paraprofessional program and providing opportunities for our community to get involved in ensuring that everyone has equitable access to create the life they imagine. Thank you. Oh, thank you both for all that you do. I so appreciate you. Back to you, Frank. Checking out the uh, checking out the cyber high fives that are on the screen right here because everyone is so excited about the amazing work that uh, United Way Sun Coast is doing and it is happening indeed. Um, and our friends just talked about some of the efforts they're putting forth, but I want to tell you earlier this year, I had a chance to tell our viewers here at 10 Tampa Bay about another important effort that's going on in the community. I'm talking about Operation Graduate. Check this out. All right, it's all good. Bottom line, we were talking about the amazing work that's happening with that organization, Operation Graduate, which, by the way, has a 100% graduation rate. There's even a, a wall of fame there, uh, kind of an ode to all the people who have come through that program. And then it's like a, a, a setup for a built-in mentorship is all the uh, folks who have participated and they've graduated, they've gone on, but they've come back. And so they give back, and that's all a part of United Way's mission. 
So as we move forward, I want to tell you about this because the work of United Way Suncoast, as you well know, is interwoven. It's an effort between its own team and the success of its strategic community partners, kind of like what I was just mentioning right there. So if you bring your hands together, what is he talking about? If you bring your hands together like this, you do this right here. We got like an exercise and I've got notes on my hand and everything. But you bring your hands together and you, you interlock your fingers. That kind of gives you uh, a vision of the effort and the plan that the United Way is working with partners on as we uh, move forward with this strategic plan. And we want to bring in some special guests to help explain how United Way Suncoast will deepen its commitment to those partners. Jessica, you you got you got to unclasp your hands to take part in this this <laughs> portion of the presentation. Thank you, Frank. Our plans to lift up and deepen our community partner role um, will include several aspects that we are um, going to be ampli amplifying moving forward. And we, you know, there is nothing that United Way that 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 analogy, Frank, was perfect because there's nothing that United Way Suncoast does um, alone. Everything that we do is in partnership with our community and with our community partners. And I could not be more excited to have some of our partners be joining us this morning, and and we have um, uh, to talk about um, their plans and our partnerships. So we have Parenting Matters Executive Director Katrina Bellamere. Boys and Girls Club of the Sun Coast President Freddie Williams and All Faiths Food Bank CEO Sandra Frank. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, Katrina, let's start with you. Parenting Matters received funding from United Way Sun Coast for its Parent Partner Program, a parenting education and support program that aligns with our early learning focus. Our strategic vision calls for multi year funding um, to our strategic community partners. How do you think multi-year funding will help our partners in planning and their planning and in their mission? Well, first, thank you for having me, um, Jessica. We love being a part of the United Way Suncoast team. And I, I just love, love, love that you guys are looking at multi-year funding as one of your strategies. I think it's very smart. When I think about how it can impact the work that we're doing, I think of two main things. The first one is that we can say yes to more families. So oftentimes families come into programs in our community all throughout the year. And sometimes that's at the end of a funding cycle and we're not sure if the funds will be there long-term. And so that means one, means one of three things happen. Either they're gonna go on a wait list until we're sure that we have the funding um, or in some cases with you know community partners, we have to say this program's no longer available and that's the worst case scenario. Other times we may have to shorten the duration of the program to make sure that families um, are getting services, but it may not be enough. So with our program, we work um, intense, it's intense and we work with families for up to six months um, or more to help them overcome barriers to school success. So shorting that shortening that duration means that they're not getting to the finish line. So we want to make sure that, that we're doing with all families and they're getting um, that permanent change uh, that's going to affect their child forever in school. And so having that multi-year funding means that we can say yes to families and serve them as long as it takes. The second thing is that I think it really uh, makes stronger programs in our community. So initiative funding is fantastic. You get to try new things, but having this sustainable funding uh, that this would offer means that you can build on what's working and really improve programs to have the greatest impact. So ultimately, I think it's a really smart strategy that's going to mean that we have really strong programs in our community and that they will be available when families really need them. Oh, thank you, Katrina. Freddie, I'm so excited you're here this morning. The Boys and Girls Club of the Suncoast received United Way Suncoast funding for the Let's Go Learn Literacy Program and your Teen Workforce Development Program, all a part of our efforts to promote youth success. I also know that 54% of club members say the club saved their life and 97% of club teams expect to graduate from high school. Incredible, incredible impact. Clearly, you rely on data as much as we do, and, and part of our strategic vision calls for us to facilitate, sponsor, and invest in a data center um, in partnership with local universities and our community investment, our community strategic, strategic community partners, say that 10 times fast, to synchronize and analyze neighborhood, county, and regional data on people in need. So talk to us about how much that type of data center and support would help your organization. Thank you, Jessica, and, and thank you so much for the United Way's leadership and and really elevating, convening, and providing leadership throughout the entire region. You know, data is critical to ensure that we're understanding community needs and ensuring that we're able to direct resources 
in the most efficient way to drive the greatest impact uh, possible. We owe it to those that we serve. We owe it to the donors that have entrusted the resources uh, with our organizations. Um, and we, but yet we find that we can only do so much as an organization. So the United Way stepping into an expanded role that is able to provide these resources to the broader system of all you, of not just you serving organizations, but all nonprofits is absolutely incredible. We utilize different reports uh, to inform our programs and boys and girls clubs, but yet we we're always trying to find ways to really pinpoint to ensure that we're in the right neighborhood with the right program to ensure that those our, our, our ability of delivering those programs can have the greatest macro outcomes for the entire community to drive community level change. Um, again, we applaud United Way and, and your leadership in doing this. It's going to help all organizations across the broader region really think through and understand their impact. Um, it's going to improve the lives for generations to come. And we are so excited uh, for this new role and this new resource that's made available for other organizations. Oh, thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Uh, Sandra, uh, United Way Suncoast has given support to your SNAP outreach program that boosts financial stability by connecting individuals that are food insecure to mobile pantries and assist them with the application process for SNAP benefits. Mm -hmm. Another key part of our strategic vision um, will involve investing in um, a just a process to, and, and a strengthening of that, um, that navigation um, to helping people, making it easier for them to access and receive services. How much do you think that approach to help communicate, um, mm -hmm. to help community members navigate the public service mm -hmm. area, um, you know, how you know, how do you think that's going to help them? Because many times that can be such a challenge and a maze for them. You know, actually that's that's probably the greatest challenge that they have and that we have because uh, research has already shown us that SNAP reduces poverty and food insecurity and over the long term leads to improved economic outcomes especially for children. So we know that this, this is a, a time well spent uh, and helps strengthen the, the financial stability of our families. Um, the, the challenges are extreme. You, United Way, thank you, have done some outstanding research in this area and understand the litany of uh, difficulties and barriers that families face in trying to access SNAP benefits. Um, I would like for a, a second to focus on DeSoto, which is quite unique in that it is a very rural and poor community. Uh, just does not have the resources, yet has that very high level of poverty. Transportation is a problem out there. Um, language barriers with a very large Spanish-speaking population. Um, and uh, technology is really a challenge. Not only lack of access to computers, but little or no access to Wi-Fi. So we, we have our work cut out for us, United Way and All Faiths Food Bank in serving DeSoto County. Uh, I think when I asked our experts, our, our benefit specialists and, and SNAP specialists, what the biggest challenges were, it is that multiplicity. It is that uh, filling out the same form of various different programs, but essentially filling out the same information in the same extensive form time and time again, Medicaid, SNAP, kid care, I could go on. Your work to, to, to analyze these various application processes, to simplify your know, work on a, a language that is lay person friendly and getting it into the, the hands of the clients that we mutually serve uh, will be a, a, a game changer, a life changer for our families who need the services of United Way and All Faith Food Bank. So again, thank you for understanding and knowing Benefit specialists and clarification, ease, ease of access is really the secret to supporting financial stability for families. Thank you, Sandra. We are thrilled to be your partner and thank you for all that you do. Thank you for everything that all three of you do. And I, I want everyone to know that our plans to uh, deepen our community partner role also includes creating a center that will help develop shared services platforms and foster collaborative partnerships. Um, and we're also going to be boosting our public policy advocacy because we know this will be transformative. We can't program our way out of our community issues. It also takes advocacy um, as well. And we're also going to be creating a lived experience advisory council so that people and individuals in our community who have, who have experienced hardship um, can share authentic insights and help us understand what works 
and what doesn't. And we want to make sure that that open channel of communication is constantly there uh, so that we can test and we can assure that we are, we are going in the right direction. So in closing, I want to ask each of you to sum it up of what it means to be a United Way Suncoast strategic community partner, because from us, we're com completely grateful for our partnerships, but we'd love to hear it from you. Um, so Katrina, I'm going to start with you. Sure. I think it's, it's, amazing to be part of the transformation and you know so often like the fam we tell the families that we work with you don't have to do this alone we're here with you and to know that as a community partner we don't have to do it alone and that we can see that that bigger impact together is really amazing and so it's it's just wonderful to see our community changing and improving because everybody's focused and working on it together friday yeah, we're extremely honored and appreciative to be a United Way strategic partner. Um, in fact, uh, because of the United Way's ability to bring partners together, we don't see other nonprofits as competition. They're friends, recognizing that uh, we're so much stronger when all able to work together. And we really look forward to collectively work together to transform our region. Excited for the next chapter as we advocate on behalf of our neighbors, friends, family, children to create a more prosperous community. So thank you very much, Jessica, and the entire United Way team. Thank you, Freddie. Sandra? Well, that's been so well said. <laughs> uh, but, but to just cap it off for All Faiths Food Bank, our mission is together with our partners, we're going to end hunger. And we understand that like something, like you said, Jessica, that, that we can't, by providing food, work our way out of poverty and, and hunger. It's going to be through uh, addressing the families underlying uh, issues that contribute to food insecurity. We bring the expertise on food insecurity and hunger. We partner with United Way because you're the experts on financial stability and strategies to, to bring self-sufficiency to those families. We look to you to, to partner to help end hunger and build a strong future for these families. So it is really a true partnership. Thank you. Thank you. It is so clear that we are stronger together. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Frank. Oh my goodness, I just love eavesdropping on these conversations because as we all know, it starts with a talk and that leads to action and that gets us to where we're trying to go. And we also know that a nonprofit cannot succeed without strong support from board members out there, corporate partners. So United Way Suncoast and civic business leaders out there have represented the backbone of the organization since 24, 1924. That continues to be the case today with companies like Publix, Raymond James, USAA, and many more. That also includes individual donors and UWS leadership societies like uh, Women United and Young Leaders. They make up a key component too. We don't wanna leave out anybody. Everyone's help counts. So the future is bright. And for more about the future and the mission, Jessica, we want you to tell us more about this. As we look to extend our mission work with this new strategic vision, a vital component will continue to be the support we receive from individual donors and our corporate partners. Here to talk more about this with me is United Way Suncoast board member and donor, Jamie Agasti, and United Way board member and Florida Blue senior communications lead, Estella Gray. So Jamie, let's start with you. I am so excited to give you an opportunity to talk about the Campbell Park Early Learning Network, a new United Way Suncoast initiative that seeks to transform the lives of preschoolers and their families in the historic South St. Petersburg neighborhood. What inspired you and your wife, Jane, to give transformational support to help launch that project? Well, thanks, Jessica. Um, both Jane and I uh, feel very strongly that helping others grow and learn it is the greatest gift, right? And United Way uh, is a leader, uh, a convener, and a partner, and has the skill and the capability of bringing many organizations to bear to surround the young children and families uh, that we're trying to serve. Um, so the opportunity for us to invest to support the Campbell Park Resource Center Early Learning Network was something that both Jane and I incredibly excited about because we want to try to make an impact and help lives in our community. That is so awesome. And we are incredibly grateful. 
Uh, Jamie, you know that our new strategic vision calls for enhancing and deepening our relationship with donors just like you. And we want to elevate our communication with donors to stay in touch with them. We want to demonstrate the impact of their contributions and listen how they want to be engaged as partners. Why, why do you think these steps are so important? Well, you know, Jessica, in today's world, uh, most of us want to feel connected to a larger purpose and a vision. And, uh, and quite frankly, we all want to be part of the solution in our communities. And engaged donors need to have the information, the data, need to understand the stories that impact both heart and mind so they can feel connected as they understand how their dollars are being invested in the community. And so from my perspective, a, a frequent two-way communication with donor and United Way, volunteer in United Way, is an incredibly important vehicle to make sure that um, philanthropic vision of the donor is being delivered and the impact is being uh, made in the community. Awesome. Yes. And we are we are excited about continuing our efforts to that end. Estella, I'm going to go to you now. Um, the support Florida Blue provides um, us has proven to be critical support that we've received from donors like Jamie and Jane, just as, just as important. Um, and Florida Blue recently partnered with United Way Suncoast, Bay Area Legal Services, and the University Area Community Development Center and Gulf Coast Legal Services to help community members avoid eviction in the Hillsborough and Manatee Sarasota areas. Why does Florida Blue choose to work with United Way Suncoast on such impactful initiatives? Well, Jessica, thank you for that question. I will speak on behalf of myself as a long-term serving board member in different um, boards across Florida and as a staff member of Florida Blue. To me, it's about the mission alignment and impact. So Florida Blue's mission is to help people and communities achieve health. So what does that mean? What does health mean? Is it just about insurance provision? Is it about your doctor care? No, it's about your mental health wellness. It's about literacy. It is a broad reaching mission that aligns so well with what United Way Suncoast does every day. Um, it's about getting to the grassroots issues and also the big picture issues. And United Way Suncoast continues to be the most valuable community investor in this region. And Florida Blue is thrilled and always standing ready to partner with United Way Suncoast, doing the most good, really, for the most people. Awesome. Well, I think to expand on that a little bit more, you know, when it comes to the strategic vision, we also want to deepen our relationships with corporate partners like you. And we're looking to reimagine our workplace campaigns with apps, social media, and personal stories. And we want to resonate with companies' philanthropic values and move towards year-round relationships. So tell us why it's important to strengthen our efforts with the corporate community. Jessica, because it's going to take private sector, public sector, community activism to lift our community. We know that Alice numbers are really appalling. And we look at the data, as uh, Jamie referenced, to people who may be slightly above the poverty line but living check to check. We also know that these issues are generational, right? It will not take a, one silver bullet, one nonprofit, or one corporation. It is going to be the collective efforts of the Florida Blues and other private entities and public sector entities and elected officials to really move the needle on to impact those communities and people who are living check to check and who, who lack access to affordable health care. And we know that Healthcare also impacts performance in schools and impacts, you know, performance at work. And these issues are all intertwined. And we are just grateful to have United Way and other corporate partners, too. We actually just issued a challenge to the private sector um, regarding our growing resilient communities. You referenced the North Tampa area, asking other private companies to get on board because this picture and this mission is bigger than the United Way Suncoast and it's much larger than Florida Blue. Awesome. Well stated. So finally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back with both of you um, about our strategic vision. Um, and it is a new day, a united way, um, and really emphasizing 
and accelerating our relationship and reaching directly to new individuals, right? New donors, whether it's Gen Y or Gen Z members or connecting with retirement groups or other service organizations. And as we wrap up, Estella, you're a communications expert and Jamie, you're a marketing and business expert. What are your thoughts on reaching and connecting with those individuals? Jamie, we'll start with you. Well, I think it's pretty simple, right? As as consumers were bombarded with messages and content and our attention span is stretched in so many different ways. So to get share of mind on those important issues is absolutely critical. Um, To deeply connect with individuals, we need to meet them where they are with the channels, with the content, with the personalized story, stories that that, that reach their that reach their head and their hearts, right? So it's about it's about engaging where, when, and how our donors and our volunteers choose to access and, and to make contact with United Way. Um, we need to make it easy and simple and, and actually a little bit of fun, right? To engage individuals with United Way so they so they can feel part of this incredibly powerful mission and vision to to lift up our community. Awesome, Estella? I will say as someone who started her giving journey with United Way as a millennial at the time, and I've transitioned to a few different things now, but still engaged, um, Jamie's points are well made. I do believe that when people go home at the end of the day, you have to actually think, how are you gonna permeate and kind of get through to those people? Um, Jamie so eloquently stated, There's so much white noise. There's so much congestion out there when it comes to communicating and not just communicating. The model for giving has gone more social entrepreneurship now. People want to give to a cause and see direct impact. Right. Mm -hmm. So what that has challenged every United Way, not just United Way Suncoast to do is rethink giving the new United Way in the new way and also engage people who've never thought about giving to United Way before, but not realizing at the same time United Way is sustaining the community that they're part of. So I think it's absolutely critical to meet people where they are, but also find out where we're not meeting people. Where are we not having our message heard and being innovative in that approach and and inviting more technology, more communication, more social media, more digital platforms in to meet people. We know now one of the greatest ways to meet people is a cell phone. A text message will reach you before a Facebook post now, right? Mm-hmm. A text message will reach you before an email. So um, it's definitely critical and important that United Way is rethinking this model of community communication and engagement. Awesome. You know, thank you both for your insights today. Uh, you know, United Way Suncoast is so excited and so ready to, to tackle these challenges and opportunities. And above all, we are grateful for your leadership in our organization. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Oh, it all goes back to As the we three look to T's. Ex- oh, it all goes back to the three T's, as I was just saying there. Your time, your talents, and your treasures. We've talked about the work being done, the goals. Now we want to talk about you and why you're so important and so vital to this effort right here. UWS Chief Advancement Officer Kerry Getz and Tampa International Airport Vice President of Communications Veronica Centron are here to break it all down for us. Good morning to you, ladies. Good morning, Frank. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, I have the honor of being able to speak to one of my favorite people, Veronica Citron. You just heard from uh, Jamie Agassi and Estella Gray, and they are passionate donors and volunteer leaders with United Way Suncoast. And you can see how their excitement um, and their vision has shaped our strategic plan. And they said it was critical that we make giving easy, simple, and fun and to do that we needed to be innovative and use technology and we couldn't think of a better example of an organization who did that than the tampa international airport you may have heard about the voice of tpa contest that they ran throughout the community and the opportunity to be the voice that greets you on the shuttle as you come off your plane and come into the main terminal. And so I am fortunate enough to be with the woman who created this program, who came up with this idea, Veronica Citron, and uh, and we get to hear about how that all happened and how she did use technology to make giving easy, simple, and sure was a whole lot of fun. 
So Veronica, do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the fundraiser and how it all came about? Absolutely. I am super excited for the opportunity to share the story of TPA and how this idea came to be with all of you, Carrie and Jessica, everybody. Such a joy connecting with you. And for all of you on the line, thank you for being a part of this really critical conversation for us at TPA. And a lot of people may not know this. We've had a longstanding relationship with United Way going back about 30 years. And so every year our employees step up and say, we're giving to the United Way and we try to beat our numbers from the prior year. So our giving to the United Way has continued to increase over three decades. And so this year we tried to leverage the community's love for TPA and our iconic shuttles as a way to raise how much more money we can really give this incredible organization. So right now, I'd like to take a moment and share with you a quick little PowerPoint and to give you some metrics just about how this campaign performed as we came up with this idea at the airport. The Voice of TPA contest was really born out of, again, what Carrie mentioned. How do we go ahead and leverage the love of the community for this airport in a way that helps this community partner? And at the very minimum, we wanted to make sure that people knew that we are partners with the United Way, that giving to the United Way is our social responsibility and should be theirs as well. And so by leveraging their love for the airport, we said Voice of TPA will do well, and it did. Here are some of the goals. This is really the why behind this Voice of TPA campaign. Raise funds for United Way, of course, and awareness about their work and impact in the community as well as elevate TPA's reputation as one of the most generous workplaces in our region by generating a lot of positive, positive coverage and also sparking community and travel excitement about being the voice of TPA's iconic shuttles. I'll tell you, I get friends all the time who say, hey, I wanna be the voice of the airport, I wanna do this and that. This contest really finally gave anybody in the community the opportunity to have their voice featured in the shuttle, greeting passengers. So what you're seeing now is really the what. How did we go about putting this campaign together and what really what the, what the contest is about? The contest itself ran for four weeks between mid-May to mid-June. It was $5 per entry. We collaborated the whole time with the United Way in thinking through what is a good starting point to invite the community and generate as much participation as possible. Is it a $10 entry? Is it a $20 entry to get more money? Well, ultimately we decided let's keep it low and really offer this opportunity to anybody, $5 for a chance at having their voice greet passengers on our shuttles for a month and 100% of the money going to the United Way. As I said, the winter shuttle message basically was featured for the entire month of July. And think about the excitement that that generates. It is summer travel season. People want to travel to Florida. A lot of people in Florida are traveling to visit loved ones after the wide availability of vaccines. And so July was a prime time to get the voice be heard by a lot of people. So now on this next slide, I'm going to show you exactly the how. Key for this contest being the first time ever TPA has ever done this. And here's why that matters. The honor of having your voice featured on our shuttles typically has gone to the mayor of Tampa. And so... This giving an opportunity to any community member, we really had to do a strong, strong job in, in getting the word out there and making sure people knew this contest was happening, uh, how long it was lasting, and for an entire month, stretch the word and try to create that domino effect. You couldn't just really do a big media outreach at the beginning, and then nobody would hear about the contest for the next four weeks. We needed to try to pace that messaging out through all of these opportunities you see on your screen to continue generating buzz over the four week period. And again, pay those opportunities to keep the chatter about Voice of TPA going. And so we did that thanks to a number of opportunities, Clear Channel donated billboards on the highway. Of course, we got a ton of earned media uh, in all of the different channels, TV, radio, print, and online to get the, the word out on the contest. We did social media videos, one including the mayor of Tampa, who's also on the TPA, uh, Hillsborough County Aviation Authority Board, and our CEO. We had posters all over our main terminal and electric uh, campaign posters. And we also invited local celebrities to record their own custom shuttle message here at the airport and then share it on their social media accounts, as well as doing other stories on, in some of our different communications channels. And here are the results of this campaign. In my last slide, you take a look, 965 paid transactions that resulted in more than $16,000 for the United Way uh, campaign, social media alone with 13 posts. We had a reach of nearly 300,000 people and the videos that I um, alluded to earlier generated 
32,412 views and produced a lot of engagements. Every time somebody reacted, commented, clicked on that video, uh, that's really what the engagement metrics are. For Earn Media, 41 news stories on this, reaching uh, more than 4 million people and really getting a lot of that attention online as well as on social. And it generated an earned media value of $178,000. Why does that matter? It tells us the campaign worked. And again, at the very minimum, we were able to get a lot of word out in the community about what the United Way is doing, helping lift families in our region, and how the airport wants to be a partner in that process, and how we're inviting the community to get engaged as well. Of course, best case scenario, here's another $16,000 that we didn't have before that now go to the United Way thanks to our community support. And that is on top of the donations that our team already had garnered as a result of our internal employee campaign. I am extremely proud to share that as part of the annual employee campaign of the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority, we hit a record amount of donations for the United Way. So when you compare, you know, uh, combine the employee donations and the United Way Voice of TPA contest donations, we had more than $87,000 in 2021, all going to the incredible work of the United Way. So for us, it was humbling to have this community support. Again, amazing that the support we had from our own team, which we do this every year. But again, just trying to get creative and as, as Carrie mentioned, have a lot of fun in how we reach the community to, to spread the good word of the United Way. Oh, thank you, Veronica. We are the ones that are truly humbled. We are the ones that are so fortunate to have you as a partner. And I know that it is part of sort of what what it's part of the TPA way to incorporate the United Way Suncoast campaign into what you do for the community. I know you've done a 5K on the runway and now you've done the voice of the shuttle. What is it about your culture and what is it that you do to inspire your employees to become so active, so creative and so generous? You know, I've been with the airport now about a year and a half after leaving Bay News 9, and, and this is truly, Carrie, a super, and you know this because you've worked here too, this is <laughs> such an incredibly generous team. The folks who work for the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority really are moved by the work of the United Way. Every year, people like practically fight each other to be chairs of the campaign. I was a 2021 chair along with two of my colleagues, and so we take a lot of pride in being a good community partner. We find it is our responsibility to help. We are blessed with working for a great organization. And we wanna be able to have an opportunity to bless others in the way that we have been blessed. So it is a very personal thing. Of course, this is also a great employee engagement tool. People get excited about every year's campaign and what's different about this, what little contests and things we're doing internally to really get our employees motivated to donate more than they donated the year prior. So for us, it's about giving back and, and, and really making a difference. And it's something we take a lot of pride in. Well, I, you called me out because, yes, it's true. I used to work at Tampa International Airport, too. I always say I love my United Way Suncoast campaign so much that, well, here I am. So thank you so much. And one thing I do know between the Tampa International Airport and also here at United Way Suncoast is we both value our statistics. We follow, you follow your passenger data and we follow the data of those that we serve as well. And I know that I see a lot of parallels in the way that we take a lot of care to ensure that we're giving the best service and the best experience that we can to those that we serve, whether it be someone who's flying somewhere or one of our Alice families who make up 43% of, of our community. Mm -hmm. And so we are just so grateful for that. And and thank you just for everything that you do. Thank you for your creativity. Thank you for this new campaign. Thank you for letting us use a new technology for us. We, we built the Voice of TPA on a platform that we have yeah. here at United Way Suncoast. So that was exciting for us. Never before had we been able to do it on such a, a large scale. And so it's just, a, it, it's great to see our two organizations parallel so closely in the work that we do. I will tell you that, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, and this is something that we get a lot of questions about because first year of the campaign and this contest, which we hope to roll out every year as a tradition at TPA, ended up producing a winner that almost seemed publicly as if we planned it and we did it. So the winner of this campaign, Casey Phillips, it is, she's a reporter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a sideline reporter. So when we see, you know, we do, we used a, a Google randomizer to pick a random person out of the 965 transactions. Casey Phillips' name comes up. And next thing you know, as we Google the name, we're like, uh oh, these are the Buccaneers. People are going to think we totally just made this happen on purpose. No, that was absolutely at random, which was at the core of why we did this contest in, in this way. But the really cool thing is when you when when you're blessed with opportunities, you got to run with it, right? So in this case, we made that call to the Buccaneers and said, "Hey, 
your girl won. How would you like to support this? And so the Buccaneers send the cheerleaders and the Lombardi trophy to the airport on the first day of July, where her voice was featured on the shuttles. And so here you see how the partners, right? Everybody wants to rally behind the United Way. And it is easy why. We see the receipts of your work. It is very easy to see where your dollars are in action in our community. And so when you make that call, you get that support. Well, you know, it, it seems like it seem like such a crazy coincidence, but I truly believe that good things happen to good people. Yes. And you are such a great organization and we are so grateful for your partnership. So thank you for sharing your uh, your your experience and your your campaign. And I hope that that inspires others to come up with ways that they can take what they do every day and share it with the community for a good cause. Absolutely. We love, you know, we love the airport. That's the, the analogy that I can share. We love seeing families embrace, reconnect. Uh, that's what travel is about. And, and it's really aligning with what you see, right? You, you fi find that families want to embrace more opportunity. They want to rise. And, and you are really the vessel to help many of our families do that. So thank you for the great work that you all do. Thank you, Veronica. And thank you for your time today. Yes, thank you. Oh, I love it. Veronica says we can see the receipts. And, and you know what, Veronica, you dropped some information because Carrie hit you with one of these. <sighs> so great information and great effort by everyone involved. And we want to thank all of you for joining us uh, this morning for this great conversation. But before you go, hold on, because as we told you at first, Jessica has some closing remarks, a short video, won't take much of your time, about 60 seconds or so. It's going to talk about the great mission a little bit more. And as a reminder, we want to remind you, don't forget to join us at 8.30 in the morning, September 29th. Again, September 29th, 8.30 in the morning for a special live presentation on Zoom, because that's how we get down anymore. We're doing it on Zoom to learn more about the future of philanthropy, maximizing Mackenzie Scott's generosity. Also, you get a chance to check out my podcast, A Frank Conversation. A few of our friends this morning have been on my podcast. And if you're up dark and early, check out Brightside, Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 7. One more note, go Bucks. Jessica Miroff, take us home. Jessica, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but unfortunately, we're having an audio issue. It's all good, though. Yeah, I, I know. There you are. There you are. Because I was going to toss to your video, but we've got you now. So so we, we, did a, we did a rehearsal for 60 seconds about the 60 second video that you're going to tell us about oh, and all that good stuff. You know, this could not be more perfect for, you know, for 2020. I exactly. mean, literally, how many times have we said you are on mute? I am like, I honestly, I can't. I'm not right here now. to judge because I've done the I same thing. I can't right now. Man, I was saying some really powerful things. I, everyone, I'm incredibly sorry, but this is a genuine moment of 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 just personal uh <laughs> we know you've got some more gems in there drop some <laughs> drop some wisdom on it. <laughs> taking myself off mute all right everyone i'm just so glad that you were here this morning and thank you for your grace and and what i wanted to share was that we have the answer you know if you're a company looking to lift up communities create a greater financial stability and help children read on grade level we have the answer if you want to stop talking about DEI and start doing something about DEI, we have the answer. Of course, we know the problem. Social inequality costs the U.S. up to $1 trillion a year. And in 2020, the pandemic and the renewed social justice movement underscored racial gaps in early learning, education, and financial stability. These gaps hurt everyone economically and held back the people who needed our help the most. 
Companies scramble to offer a genuine response, but as we look back a year later, many are asking were those pledges progress or were they merely performative? What should companies do to uphold these promises? We have the answer. We have the answer because we've always had the answer. Don't call it a comeback for United Way Suncoast because we've been here for 97 years. Rallying companies and citizens for a common good is not new to us. Collaboration is woven into our name. Community is in our roots. Care is in our DNA. And now social justice is woven into every aspect of our new strategic vision. In the wake of George Floyd's murder, many companies had to pivot. But United Way Suncoast already had in its boots on the ground with resource centers in Sulphur Springs and North Greenwood and Campbell Park. While others called for business leaders to unite behind a new common cause, we simply had to look at the $6 million we invest annually to our community partners and the millions more we use to fuel our own initiatives that we know are standing on the right side of history. Our focus on early learning, youth success, and financial stability positively alters the lives of hundreds of thousands of people in the Suncoast region every single day. But we're not satisfied. Our new strategic vision focuses directly on how we can do even more. Our work focuses on some of the region's most underserved communities. And now with a $20 million gift from Mackenzie Scott, we are ready to transform those communities and help those who need it the most. We don't want to be a part of necessary change. We want to lead it because this is what we've been doing since we were founded in 1924. This is our mission and we will not waver from it. So to every business out there struggling to match action with words, we have the answer. To every volunteer who wants to create lasting impact, we have the answer. To every donor who was seeking a forthright steward of their dollars, we have the answer. All we need is for you to stand with us, to give us of your time, your talent, and your treasure to help us transform this region. Because as we like to say every single day, united we rise, united we win. Every step forward transforms into something bigger. United Way Suncoast multiplies our community impact creating powerful outcomes that individuals need to thrive. With every donation, every volunteer hour, and every advocate, United Way Suncoast creates opportunities today, transforms lives tomorrow, and builds a more equitable future for generations to come. United We Rise. United We Win.